We're going to begin our talk on male reproductive system today by looking at uh, the origin of sperm, where sperm develops in the testis. Uh, a little background on that. Inside the testis, which is pretty much an oval structure, there is a network of fine tubules we call seminiferous tubules. Uh, they extend out through most of the testis as a twisted and coiled tubules, uh, kind of like spaghetti going out through there. Uh, there's one location on the side of the testis where these tubules come together and make a uh, interconnected network of passages. Kind of like different streets that pass through town and eventually they lead into small ducts that lead out of the testis and to the epididymis that lies adjacent to the testis. We're going to begin our look at the, te the uh, male reproductive system by looking at a cross section of one of these small tubules that passes through here. Now between these tubules there are other connective tissues and other special cells we consider all of those interstitial tissues between the seminiferous tubules. We're going to begin our drawing of the uh, seminiferous tubules of the testis. by showing the position of what we call peritubular cells. Peritubular cells that make the, uh, the outer wall of each of these tubules. So here we have, this would be a tubule up here, another tubule here, and there's a complete tubule right in there. This would be the interstitial region between the tubules here. Now these peritubular cells are a little bit like smooth muscle cells. They're elongate and have an a elongate nucleus a long oval shaped nucleus around in each of the cells, in the center of each of the cells. So these are the peritubular cells around a single seminiferous tubule. Next we're going to look at what's going on inside the seminiferous tubule. So I'll start that drawing next. Now I hope all this shows up well enough in the, in the view here, uh, but this is a single seminiferous tubule. There's another one up here, another one over here. We didn't draw the whole thing. And in between those we have the interstitial tissues over here. So we've labeled peritubular cells in the brown that make the outer wall of each seminiferous tubule. As you go from the outside to the inside, to the very outside we have the spermatogonia out here. They divide and add more cells out at the margin and then some of those cells when they divide move inward to start the spermatogenesis process as a primary spermatocyte. The primary spermatocyte undergoes the first biotic division to become haploid cells. So the primary spermatocyte is diploid the secondary spermatocytes that result from division of primary spermatocytes, these are haploid cells. So that's what we call a reduction division. We reduce the number of chromosomes uh, by half. So these are haploid cells, one in, half the number of chromosomes. Those cells will then undergo another division, the second meiotic division, to form uh, spermatids. And these are spermatids here. They are in their final division stage, they won't divide again, but they undergo this change of shape uh, to become sperm or spermatozoa. Spermatozoans occupy the very center of a seminiferous tubule. From here they'll be able to travel down through the tubule uh, leading out of the testis. Sertoli cells, we mentioned, are supportive cells. They have a number of different roles within the uh, testis. We'll try to enumerate later. 
The interstitial tissues have capillaries, they have loose connective tissue, there would be fibroblasts and collagen fibers making up that loose connective tissue. And then they have testosterone producing cells, the Leydig cells, L-E-Y-D-I-G, the Leydig cells up here. So that's a look of what you have inside of the, of the testis, what makes up the inside of the testis. In this image, we see the testis, we see seminiferous tubules, and we see all the ducts that connect over, and this is the epididymis over on this side, and then the ductus deferens leading up this way. Let's go ahead and label some of this. I put a green line around the outside of the, the testis here. That's going to represent a thick connective tissue layer that's on the outside of the testis. We call the tunica arbuginea. Tunica albuginea. That just means a white tunic or a white covering, tunica albuginea. Immediately underneath that dense connective tissue that covers the outside of the testis, there are the seminiferous tubules and the interstitial tissues between them that make up most of the, the testis. We just talked about that. So this here just represents a single seminiferous tubule. There would be hundreds of those out there through the testis. So there's a seminiferous tubule, a single seminiferous tubule. Uh, this portion of the seminiferous tubule, this twisted part out here, is where the sperm are produced. And all those sperm, as, as they move from the periphery of the uh, tubule to the middle, remember they go through the stages of spermatogenesis, so you end up with the mature sperm, or the maturing sperm anyway, to the very middle of the tube, and then that moves toward uh, the epididymis. The very last part of the seminiferous tubule right here is sometimes called the straight tubule or tubuli recti. You can call it straight tubule, but anyway, that's the scientific name, tubuli recti. Those straight tubules that lead into the next part. The next part is like a bunch of branching caverns or uh, sponge-like spaces going through here. So there are different pathways through between the seminiferous tubule and the epididymis here. But anyway, this general region right in here is called the rete testis, R-E-T-E, -E, testis. Rete, rete is a word that refers to a network of uh, connected parts. So you pass through the network and then you go into some tubules that bridge between the testis and the epididymis. These are called efferent ductules. And I've got one, two, three, four, five of them drawn in here. There would be more than that in the, in the 20s or so of uh, efferent ductules. So, so far our sperm have traveled through seminiferous tubule, tubuli recti, rete testis, efferent ductules, and then finally into this large coiled duct out here. This is the epididymis. The epididymis. The epididymis has a region we refer to as the head and the body and the tail. So anyway, there's from the top to the bottom down through here, that's all epididymis. And at the very tail of the epididymis, it leads into our ductus deferens. Also known as the vas deferens. All of this is within the scrotal sac uh, and the very beginnings of the male reproductive system pathway, the path of sperm here. This ductus deferens will lead out of the scrotal sac and up into the body cavity, and that's the picture we'll look at next. Okay, now we, we have a, a view of what's happening on the inside of the male reproductive system. Now on the inside of the body uh, for male reproductive system, 
We have already covered portions of this, the testis and epididymis, ductus deferens shown here. Uh, this would be the scrotal sac around the outside of that. Uh, so this ductus deferens heads up inside of the body. The body cavity actually has a tiny tube that follows the ductus deferens down in here and makes a, a partial peritoneal lining or covering along the testis over here. So anyway, the ductus deferens comes up inside of the body. It loops up over the top of the uh, ureter that passes through here. I kind of had that uh, shown the wrong way there, don't I? It should go loop over the ureter and then come in around on the back side of the urethra right here. So here's urinary bladder. This is urethra. The urethra passes through the prostate gland and then down through um, what we call the membranous portion of the urethra between the prostate and where it enters into uh, what's called the corpora spongiosum, which leads into the penis out here. So we have corpora spongiosum here and around that we'll also have another a portion we'll call corpora cavernosum and we'll get to labeling that later. So in, in this view, some things we need to, to note, scrotal sac, down here, of course, or scrotum, testis epididymis, ductus deferens. Uh, up here along the ductus deferens, there are accessory glands. In males, there are three accessory glands to the reproductive system. The seminal vesicle, indicated right here, the prostate gland we've already mentioned, and what's called a bulbo-urethral gland, or sometimes Cowper's gland, is indicated here. So, we're going to label some of these things and come back to it. Okay, now uh, we put labels on most of this, so we'll go over it one more time. The uh, scrotal sac, or scrotum, down here, contains the testis and epididymis and beginning of the ductus deferens that travels from the scrotal sac up through the body wall into the body cavity. In the body cavity, it starts up in, in to the front of the body cavity and then goes back behind, beside the bladder and behind the ureter and loops around and comes in on the back side of the urethra there. Now here we've labeled the ureter, draining uh, urine from the kidney down into the bladder. It comes into the bladder here. Uh, the urinary bladder is then connected to the urethra right here. Surrounding the urethra, we have the prostate gland right there. This portion of the urethra is known as the prostatic urethra. So we have a segment, the first of the three segments of the urethra, the prostatic urethra. After leaving the prostate, it passes through the body wall. There'd be a lot of muscle, skeletal muscle in this zone right here. And uh, this is also known as the membranous urethra. This segment right through here is membranous urethra. And on the membranous urethra, we have the bulbo-urethral gland. The third segment of the urethra, after the prostate and the membranous urethra, it enters the corpora spongiosa, and this segment is known as the penile urethra. So we have those three segments of the urethra in the males. Um, the base of this corpora spongiosa that surrounds the penile urethra right here, up in the body cavity, is sometimes referred to as the bulb of the penis back here, and then of course the other end out here is known as the glans penis, expansion at the end over here. Surrounding that are additional tissues we know as foreskin, which would be removed in the process of circumcision. So anyway, that's just an expansion of the, a flap of skin over the glans penis. I think I've covered most everything we need to cover here except for a cross-sectional view through here to show um, corpora cavernosum in addition to corpora spongiosum. So we'll do that next. Now since we weren't able to show the corpora cavernosum very well in a sagittal view of, the, of uh, male reproductive structures here, um, we can do that here. This would be the uh, end of the urethra. That's part of the penile urethra. It is surrounded by tissues we call the corpora 
spongiosum it is full of small vascular spaces through here and surrounded by a fairly heavy layer of connective tissue uh, then adjacent to that above is where you have two columns of similar tissue that has more open space in it uh, for blood filled cavities Uh, these are called the corpora cavernosa, two, uh, two columns of tissue that have a similar kind of uh, function to the corpora spongiosum, but have, more, have larger blood spaces present. These are the erectile tissues inside the penis in cross-section. There would be a thin epithelium on the outside and a very thin dermal layer, dermis layer on the outside and then underneath of that we have layers of connective tissue uh, surrounding the corpora cavernosa and corpora spongiosa in there.